Hello, this is Digital Trends Live here at CES 2020 with our live coverage of everything that is going on in the world of technology. And cutting edge technology is something I am fascinated with. Robotics is something I'm fascinated with. And I think it's all going to converge here in just a minute where I may become a robot. We need to introduce ourselves first. I'm Greg Nibbler. To my right. Bob Hi. Garrett. Yes, I am Wood Garrett. We are joining, um, we are being joined by Tim Swift, who is actually doing amazing things in the exoskeletal world. And we are going to raise things to new heights, I believe. Uh, Tim, thank you so much for joining us here. You are the CEO and founder of Rome Robotics, yes. doing amazing things. The company's been around for about six years. What's the whole, what's the goal of Rome? Uh, the goal of Rome, honestly, is pretty simple. Uh, we want to move the boundaries of human performance. And those boundaries are different for everybody, right? Whether you are a Navy SEAL, uh, uh, you know, an aging adult trying to stay mobile in their homes, or an everyday athlete, uh, it, those, those boundaries look very different, but make no mistake that they exist. And so what Rome exists to do is if I can move that 10, 20%, I change your world. And that's what we seek to do. So. And we've got actually a little show and tell happening here. This looks absolutely incredible. And it looks like uh, we could strap someone in there. We could. Yeah. Greg, yeah. I believe what, you what volunteered. <laughs> tell us about this particular product here and what, it, um, what it's all about. Because you're going to revolu revolutionize skiing. Uh, yeah, so this is our first product. Uh, the, the product is Elevate, so uh, it's a device for skiers. Um, the, the goal is to help people ski longer, ski stronger, um, uh, ski for, with less pain. Um, really, the goal is to enhance your experience. And so, uh, especially for people who are aging skiers, who where being out there on the mountain, whether it be due to pain or it be due to weakness or it be due to fatigue, is, is, is an issue or a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, we found that we can help those people go live the life that they were meant to live, right? And so. Um, this really goes back to kind of what we exist to do, which is if we can, we can help you do more, we can help you go experience what you were kind of made to do. So. Well, it's, it's interesting because like, out of exoskeletals um, and everything that you can do with that, um, I didn't really pick the, the first thing that it could be used for is skiing, having never been on a ski slope in my life. Yeah. So that's an interesting thing. What is the demand in the market for um, sort of like skiing assistance? Well, to be honest, skiing in, a, in a con the consumer market is not the first thing that I went to either. Yeah. Right? I didn't grow up a skier. I'm not, uh, it's not really something you that I did. You shred down the powder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I have built exoskeletons for a long time. Uh, I've been, probably spent the last 13 years building devices and putting them in the market. And what, there's a number of things that matter a lot, and for me what matters is getting devices on people in an environment where we can have them go do something they've never done before. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things That's that we did early on is, is we worked really hard by saying go test the devices. So we had a bunch of people who would say, oh, I got to ski, you got to ski in this, you got to ski in this. Not being the skier myself, I said, yeah, right, <laughs> I, there's no way that's going to make sense. Oh, okay. And uh, he said, go, go show us. And uh, there's a point where you just can't argue with the results. You have people coming down off the mountain saying, I don't want to ski without it. Yeah, wow. um, and that's what we respond to. Um, and at this point, we benefited significantly from it because our job is basically daily, we send people falling down mountains yeah. uh, in, in devices. And so uh, our technology has matured, our ability to service those devices has matured, so we've learned a lot, which makes it that much easier for us to go out into the market and to reach people in other areas as the technology continues to develop. Well, we've just fitted uh, Greg up in one of your EXO devices. You can hear that kind of like uh, clicking noises and getting strapped in. It takes roughly about three minutes to get this entire thing sorted and it looks like you are in there. This is so impressive, but what does it feel like? I guess one of the questions that I want to know is how lightweight is it? What's the accessibility like? What yeah. kind of improvement, improved movement can Greg expect here? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so the first piece here is the device is actually designed for skiing, mm -hmm. not for standing on stages, right? Yes. So, yeah, yeah, right. Uh, slight caveat there. But uh -huh. I think the real value add here is that the overall range of motion is normal. Uh, the device is actually fairly light. You have about two and a half pounds on your legs. Oh, that's not much at all. It's not much. It's, uh, the, the, the weight on your leg is very, very light. Um, you got about 10 pounds living in the backpack. So um, overall, you're adding, you're adding a handful of pounds, but your ability to stay very dynamic and very active is, is very, there's a very small limit on that. Yeah, wow. And so um, our goal with all of this is to let people go live very active, very dynamic lives. And um, historically, I mean, I've been pr as much culprit as I have been benefit in this, but historically devices in these spaces are big and heavy and yeah. slow. And uh, that's not how people live life. And so what our goal was is make lightweight, low-cost machines that we can go put into real world. So that was like three minutes, and I've got it on me right now. And I will say you were talking about skiing. I am a lifelong skier. Okay. So I started at a young age, so I, yeah. I do know how hard it is 
on yep. your body. I mean, if, yep. especially if you, mm. if you take knees. any time off, yeah, it gets really hard. So this is, this is a weird feeling right now, I can say, because I can yep. feel it strapped on right here. Yeah. It's a new, new feeling. Yeah, but you can see right now, so right now it's, uh, it's unpowered, so it's turned uh -huh. off, but strapped onto you. And you can see, you, I mean, you're right now, you're moving around, you're squatting. Right. Uh, you're not you're, even turned you're on. You're lunging <laughs> different ways. But Tim's doing such a good job. And I so, know. Yeah. And so this is actually one of the one of the things that we worked the hardest on at the very beginning was uh -huh. is how do we put you into a device where you can maintain the flexibility and the range right. of motion and the comfort level that you otherwise would have, right? Yeah, and, and it, it does. I mean, right now I I can clearly move, exactly. do whatever I would normally uh -huh. do. And so, so what happens when he powers it on? So at this point, you can go ahead and you can hit that button up on your up on your. Oh, shoulder. okay, right here. Yeah, if you hit it one time, it'll right. go ahead and power on. So it's now it's on at a very low power right now. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, we might, might, Derek, if you want to step in and go ahead and take his power up uh, just a stage. What happens when the power goes out? What, what happens? Oh. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, Whoa. Look at that. Now I feel like so Iron Man. So now you can, start to, you can start to feel it. Um, and as you go down, it's, it's sensing what your body's doing. So actively, at, basically Excuse in you, real time, Greg. we're evaluating what your body's doing. And then we're lining torques up with your body to basically take load off your joints. Wow. And this is happening in real time, actively as you are going about your day. How does it feel, Greg? Uh, it feels like I am Iron Man. Uh, I do kind of want to just lift this yeah. and see if I go can. Go ahead and but uh, try, try flipping Flip this table. over. I'm sure that'll <laughs> go over really so well. So one of the things that's really actually cool about these devices is because we use a uh, kind of our technical insight that allowed us to get here is our devices are predominantly plastics and fabrics mm. with an air transmission. And so what happens is on your body, there's very little impediment to motion. Yeah. And so a lot of people are in the devices and they'll be like, it's cool, but it's not doing anything, mm -hmm. um, which, is, which is kind of the goal, honestly. Right. You yeah, want a to device not notice it. for you that blends in and it disappears. Yeah. And so one of the things that's really nice is actually you could go ahead and, and go ahead and try squatting into the device itself and you can, you can kind of feel the assistance that it's providing. Yeah. Do you think you could squat for like 30 seconds and it wouldn't feel so bad? Because I know that you that can't test happen in out? real life. Mm -hmm. yeah. Turn power up, yeah. <laughs> it's a little awkward a on camera. So, yeah. so real quick here, so, so Derek, you can go ahead and put your power Let's up Let's crank it up. And let you feel it. So go ahead and sit into it Okay. Uh, just a little bit. And then it, oh, and then, wow, yeah. And then go ahead and hit that power button on your chest. What's happening? What's going to happen? When I, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that see, is that's, crazy. That's the reaction that we get yeah. every time. And so what happens is we even see this when people are skiing, right? So people will be right. skiing and they're like, oh, I love it so much. It's cool. But I don't actually think it's doing anything. And it's that line. Where is, where is your body stopping and the device starting? Right. It's really hard for people to wrap their head around. Yeah, right. And so um, the best way we've been able really to Because it feels really natural. Exactly. Doing that, yeah. yeah. The best way Ooh. we've been able to find it is to have devices that we can put you out there, we can let you go, and the device disappears on you. And so people say, what does it feel like when you're skiing? And we always say, it feels like you're skiing. Mm. Like, that's yeah. really the only, thing, the only feeling that you're going to come away with. So from something like this, you know, where, where right now this is for skiing, are yeah. there other use cases that you're seeing for this kind of thing? So the way we like to look at it is skiing is the start of our story, mm -hmm. not the end. And so we have, uh, this is our Don't first product. It's commercially available right now. You can get it. We're in five different states along the West Coast. Um, you can go rent devices today if you wanted. Uh, but it's not where we're stopping. And so we also have devices that we are in development for more tactical applications. You can think first responders or military. Mm -hmm. um, we, are, we have devices like that that are currently looking at early field evaluation, preparing for that. Um, we also have devices that we are preparing. Uh, these are kind of a little farther down the queue, but devices that we're working on for medical applications. Uh, because honestly, our target here is any place where your body is the barrier, we believe we have the opportunity to step in and, and touch it. And so that's the goal. So Tim, already we can see that the, there are leg exos. Is this moving into some, um, other limbs as well? Yeah, so uh, what we would do, honestly, our focus has been is we're going to look at knees and then we're going to grow from knees probably to other joints, looking at ankles and then hips. It's funny that you say that because we were just talking off camera that knees is the number one sort of culprit for a lot of people, you know, yep. over 60 and above. Yep, exactly. Yeah, the knees go out first, guys. Exactly. Well, it's also where you put in a large amount of torque, right? You right. use a lot, of, a lot of power going up downstairs getting in out of chairs um, there's a there's kind of a fundamentals about the way exoskeletons operate which mean um, most exoskeletons don't aren't especially a lightweight exoskeleton isn't going to go to upper bodies anytime soon oh, okay. um, the number one challenge with any of these devices is uh, in real time we're determining whether you're sit stand walk run jump right what is your right. body doing um, the fact that I could just name 95% of the things your legs are ever gonna do right yeah means my decision set is understandable. Um, with your upper, upper extremity, you can do all kinds of random stuff. And so 
for these lightweight, low-cost machines, it's, that's, that's a very hard challenge. Uh, but for right now, uh, there's, lots of, there's lots of life to go unlock with devices that touch the knees and touch the ankles and then one day move up to the hips. Mm. So. Well, using technology to increase mobility for anybody. I yeah, mean, skiing, huge. this is awesome. But uh, and, you know, I'm looking forward to what else this can do. I mean, this is really incredible, just how lightweight it is. Like, I really want to emphasize that. It's, it doesn't really feel like I'm wearing anything. It feels like a normal backpack. And then, you know, I've just got these strapped to the side of me, but it's not heavy. It's yeah, not the thing like that, that. We, we really like to, to compare to is you have about two and a half pounds living on each leg. Mm -hmm. um, and if you were to go buy a leg brace, you'd probably get a leg brace in the ballpark of one and a half to two pounds. Yep. Um, so we've provided all that is to make a robot for about a half pound. Um, and this is really what has driven us this direction. I mean, trust me, when we started this, everyone said, you're crazy. You don't, people don't build robots this way. And we always pointed out, I think that's the problem, is mm. people haven't built robots this way. Um, we can make things lighter and cheaper than anybody in the world's ever dreamed of. And uh, that's, that's the start to going to do what I think exoskeletons need to do, which is, you know, a robot one day has value living in a dark room. You shut off the lights, it'll move a box. Exoskeletons are only as good as the number of people we can go put them on. So they're not taking human jobs. Uh, no, <laughs> no, exactly. Yay, yeah, that's our, I mean, we we often joke. You know, people will bring up. They'll say, "Oh, are you, you're making cyborgs," and I was like, "I think you're misunderstanding it. We're here actually to make people live a more human life." Yeah. Oh yeah. Right? People are built to walk and run and jump and uh, ski, and right now their bodies are the thing stopping them, and we're just trying to make them more human. And so. Well, Tim, thank you so much for joining us here yep. at Digital Trends to show off all of the stuff that Rome Robotics are working on. And Greg, thank you so much for also getting involved with that. Good luck getting that back well, thank off, Thank you him. tons. And if people want to try them out, we are actually here at uh, CES upstairs in Ironwood 8 uh, showing devices off. So fantastic. feel free to come out and ski on them if you want to. Yeah, thank Greg you can so do much. it, you can too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. See, everybody can do it now. <laughs> well, uh, I want to say thank you to everybody too who's watching live. And we have a lot of coverage coming up here for CES 2020 coming up in a little bit. We're going to have... Uh, Ken Young from Flipboard in here for another edition of Tech Briefs, but we've got a lot before then, so stick around back here in a minute with more Digital Trends Live.